A viewer sent us his broken 3090 and we're here to fix it for him. So when I say broken 3090, the truth is actually in this capacity, all 3090s are broken because Nvidia shipped them with bad thermal pads. They overheat quite easily. And this is something that you can fix yourself. But the viewer who sent this in, who's a long standing supporter of ours, he's been a tier three sub on Twitch for 39 months. He is not comfortable opening up his 3090 and replacing the thermal pads. But before we plug in the GPU, let's talk about today's video sponsor of how you're gonna plug in your phone, the Anchor 521 Charger Nano Pro, similar in size to Anchor's original 20 watt charger, but is actually much quicker coming in at a 40 watt max output. And it also has dual ports so that you can charge your iPhone or other devices at the same time without cluttering up outlets with multiple chargers. And as the upgraded version of the Anchor 511 Charger Nano Pro, the Anchor 521 Charger Nano Pro supports that 40 watt max output, which is enough to charge your MacBook Air at full speed when charging with a single port. And it offers high speed charging for your phone, comparing it to the original five watt charger that came with the iPhone. It's just so much better. You can go from zero to 20% on an iPhone 13 in just 12 minutes. And then it's also equipped with their brand new Active Shield safety system to offer enhanced protection for you and your phone while you're charging. So be sure to check out the Anchor 521 Charger Nano Pro at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Now let's plug in the GPU. So this is actually the first time that I'm getting my hands on an RTX 3090. I tried to actually buy one of these when they came out and then I gave up because I didn't have $1,500 to spend on a GPU. And I think it's also hilarious that Nvidia priced this thing so high and it's their founder's edition that actually runs so poorly. It really just looks like they took the 3080 body, scaled it up and then forgot to actually make this thing better even though they made it faster. So we have the RTX 3090 installed in the system and we have Cyberpunk 2077 running in its highest settings in 4K. And you can see we're running at 63 FPS and the GPU says it's only running at 60 degrees Celsius. But this is where Nvidia kinda hides some of the information and the memory on the RTX 3090 is running way too hot. So if we switch to a program that will show us the memory temperatures, you can see that it's currently at 102 degrees with a max of 104, which is too dang hot. So we've got some high-end thermal pads and some high-end thermal paste that should hopefully cool down this RTX 3090 and get it running a little bit better. So while I have disassembled cards in the past, I have never touched a 3090 before. So there are opportunities here for me to screw this up and break his card. Hopefully I don't. 3090. So what we can see here is that these are the thermal pads that are used. And this is on the back of the GPU die. This is actually not where most of the problem lies. Most people replace the thermal pads on the front and that's where a lot of the heat's going. But since this has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, it has a lot of spaces for things to go wrong. All right, we're loosening up the back plate on the GPU core now. There goes that little leaf spring. Okay, this is the delicate process, trying to pull out these ribbon cables. So obviously if I break this, I have to replace it. <laughs> and you can't get your hands on these bad boys. I'm only mildly nervous. Down goes the... There we go, come on. I believe in you. There, I did it! I'm not watching your tutorial. <laughs> Listen, I just need to make sure I'm not gonna screw it up. There's too much money riding on the line. I'm comfortable doing this, I'm just ignorant. Oh, oh, okay. Now it's the PCB comes off, allegedly. Yes, it does. There we go. So this is, this is really, whoa, I've never, I, I guess I never paid attention. So there's the contacts that go over here into the cooler. This thing looks so cool. If we just take a look at like the heat pipes, they're all blacked out. Man, this is, this is a beefy boy. So these are the thermal pads that we're looking to replace, the memory ones that go here on the front GDDR6X memory modules, which are the ones that are overheating. When we were testing this card, the memory was running at 102, hottest 104. Some people have this going above 108, 110. These things can get super spicy. And that's where these Gelid Extreme and Gelid Ultimate thermal pads are gonna come in handy. We're gonna put the Gelid Extreme on the front, and then the ultimate on the back, I, I forgot, I need to look this up again before we do it, but we got two separate ones because one of them, when you put them on the back, it turns into mush, like gravy, so you shouldn't do that. So I did the research and we have the parts. It's like gauze almost. You see how it has like fabric in there? Ew. So one of the things I'm not necessarily confident that we need to do or sure that we need to do is anything besides the memory modules. Like we could do all of the other pads as well, but I think I might leave those stock. Do you want to eat it? It looks like a marshmallow. You want some? 
There you go. Enjoy. You weren't supposed to actually eat it. What's wrong with you? Okay, it's cleaning time. <laughs> Memory modules. clean off this bad boy too. It's like mostly cleaned up. So now what we need to do is uh, clean this side. Now we need to clean off the GPU core. Replace that thermal paste. Remember kids, only let professionals touch your graphics cards. All right, that looks good. Now it's time to go for the actual core. Gotta get the little bitties off now. What's the saying? Treat others how you would want to be treated? Something like that? Yeah. This would be good enough for me, I'm done. So we have to get the thermal pad on next. I need to figure out which one's going on which side. So, uno momento. Extremes on the front, ultimates on the back. Got it. Front extreme, FE, founder's edition. That makes sense. And then the back is FU, because nobody cares. Wait, no, it'd be BU, because it's back. Yeah, FE, BU, body udders. Close enough. Okay, and then we need to measure the width. Done did it. Oh. I done did it, yeah. I done did it, oh, I done done did it, yeah. Yeah, perfect. One done, memory done. So now what we have to do is the thermal paste. So high-end thermal paste, making sure that we cool this thing properly. Cause I mean, the GPU temps were fine. They were running at like 60. So hopefully we can get roughly the same. So you gotta spread it out as well. That's the, that's the important bit. Oh, it has like guiding holes, so that's awesome. I always love it when I get assistance with getting in the hole. So we should tighten this bad boy back down and then do the back plate. It's right here. Now we need to get the other thermal pads on the back here for the other 12 gigabytes of VRAM using the ultimate. We're supposed to use ultimate or extreme. <sighs> okay, we're good. The names are so similar. It's just like, I can't remember in my brain which one's supposed to be which. Oh, this one's tougher. Now it's time to install the spring leaf on the back, secure the GPU core. Now that we have the little tabbies, we can go ahead and put them all back so that they can work again. Now we put the back plate back on and then I think we're done. Graphics card reassembled. The GPU's installed. We're gonna turn it on for the first time. Hopefully everything still works. Oh, the light came on. That's good, the fan's spinning. All right, now we need to temperature test it in the same environments. So we're already seeing much better temperatures with it just running at idle, 34 degrees Celsius. It really did not get that low previously. I believe our previous low was like 45. So this is already a significant drop in temperature before we've even played any games. It's not exploding, that's good news. Right now, the temperatures are looking really good, 50 degrees Celsius. It's still going up because I just turned on the game, but before we were at 60. So even the core temp has dropped because of the new pasting. If we look at the GPU memory temps right now, they're only at 70 degrees Celsius, which is, that's a 35 degrees Celsius drop. That's crazy. So the memory junction temperature is at, after waiting for a little while is only 86 degrees Celsius, which is significantly lower than what it was before. We're down 18 degrees Celsius after waiting the same amount of time in game. So while the frame rate might not be higher, while the core temperature might not be lower, it's definitely lower on the part that we were trying to fix and hopefully his memory modules don't burn out because there is some risk and there's been reports of RTX 3090s dying for this very reason. But not anymore, we fixed it. Sonomous gets his RTX 3090 back cooler than ever before. Brett has no RTX 3090, but if you want me to help fix some of your PC parts, send me an email, ufdisciplemedia at gmail.com. I'd be more than interested in potentially helping you guys out with things you might be too nervous or don't have the skills in order to make your PC work better. So if you wanna see the last time I disassembled a graphics card like this, check out that video right there.